Hello, hello, hello. Jay now here with my UFC 265 recap video it happened last night. I hope you saw it. it was a great event. I still have to watch the prelims, but just from the recaps I've heard about the prelims, they seem like they were off the chain as well. Um, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the main event. Please go ahead and hit the like and share button. Please subscribe. Please uh, get the comments down there so we can start to talk about this. Um, you have to follow me everywhere: Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, everywhere to get all of my content. I almost reneged on one of these fights, but I'm glad that I didn't because it was one of the few fights that I actually did get right because I only got two out of five picks, but I'm okay with it because my analysis was actually pretty spot on without throughout the entire event. So I'm okay. Let's go ahead and talk about it. I should have turned on the fan. It is very hot in my apartment. Every time I shoot in the daytime, it's just like, uh, but then the fans are noisy. I'm gonna try to get through this without like, you know, looking all nasty and sweat. All right. <laughs> So first up, I chose Casey Kenny to beat Sandy Dong. He did not, but this was a fun, spirited fight. Lasted all three rounds, split decision in favor of Yudong. And I totally agree, actually. He just got a hit on the scorecard early and too far ahead for Casey to catch up. Took Casey a minute to kind of figure out how to um, apply his offense and to get it to work. He kind of had to bite down and get in Song's face. He was working the range better. He was landing more shots. He did win round one and probably round two on the scorecard. So he outpointed him there. But that third round was explosive. And in the second round as well, where they were just throwing shot for shot. They were just pat, 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 pat. There were moments where they were hitting each other at the same time. A very, very fun third round and a very overall fun fight, in my opinion. Casey did not like the decision. He made that very known. He made it known right then and there. And apparently afterwards behind stage, he continued to go off. And Uriah Faber, who was in Song's Corner, of course, um, I, somehow there's some John back and forth. And um, I apparently Casey said, well, I'll fight you. And Uriah was like, you don't want to fight Song again? And he was like, well, yeah, I'll fight him again. And then somehow Chito Vera got involved and called out Uriah Faber. And now Uriah Faber has put out a statement talking about he's going to give Dana White a call because he's in decent shape, although he needs some time. And he's been thinking about coming back to fight Chito specifically, but coming back to fight. So who knew all of that would come from the opening fight? <laughs> on the main card so that i mean wow so real quick let me know how you feel about that let me know how you feel about the fight if you think he won if you think casey should have went off like that let me know any additional information about all that backstage drama let me know what you know about uh vera getting involved let me know what you think about uriah possibly coming back should he should he not <sighs> just from the first fight. Now, moving on. Next pick I did not get. I chose Angela Hill to beat Tisha Torres. She did not. This was also, this was a nice, highly skilled three rounds. You saw that Angela's gotten better. She's got some new skills, especially with that wrestling. She did manage to get a takedown there at the end of the first, but it was not enough time for her to really implement anything. But you also saw that Tisha's gotten better as well. The first fight about three, four years ago, she beat her with her wrestling base, but not this time. She's been working on that stand-up and you saw that she was clearly faster than Angela Hill and she was more powerful. She threw shots that you hurt. Smack, smack, smack. I was like, that's a strong little woman. <laughs> I was like, that's a little woman. I do not want to hit me. It sounds like it would hurt. So, I mean, she had combinations. She had a jab. She was quick. She had quick footwork she took charge she was moving forward the whole time so she just won she clearly won unanimous decision in her favor i believe she's on a three fight win streak so who would you like to see her fight next next up um this fight like one of the fights i got i chose vicente luque to beat michael chiesa also one of the fights i was truly almost almost reneged on it like had the picture up almost hit send and I said you know what I've already missed two calls so let me just let it ride and I'm so glad I did and you please go back and check this fight out ended in the first round but wow we wow we did a lot happen in those like little three minutes so there was really no filling out period they came at each other and I believe it was Michael who actually landed a, a shot that sat uh Luke down yes it was and he came down there um, tried to wrap him up with a, a series of submissions. Did he try to go for a guillotine too and a rear naked and try to turn that into a uh, arm bar? Is that how that went? He tried to put a myriad of submissions on <laughs> the set that ended up with this, um, Michael up against the cage. He's trying to slide up that into an arm bar. Vicente is actually pulling it out. So you have Michael who's kind of on his back against the cage in a side position. Vicente is pulling himself out of that hole and immediately transitions into a darts that he slaps on immediately. In the transition, whew, pulling himself out, 
putting Michael in. I mean, immediately head arm and it's in. And then you see him kind of flip Michael over his body. So he, now they're side by side and it's in. He's just working it, trying to get his hips closer, trying to get the leverage. And then winner, Vicente Luque. It was beautiful. It was such a great, uh, um, it was such a great, um, oh God, I just totally, example of the artistry of mixed martial arts. This was a pretty move. All the little grappling exchanges, the reverses and all of that, him not getting caught, especially in the first choke that he had, that it looked like Michael had sunk in. All of that could have came straight out of him. It's the type of movie scene where the, um, the antagonist, he would get the initial choke, right? And then you would see a bunch of flash and cuts and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden you would end and the uh, hero's on top tapping him out. And you're like, well, I don't know how he got there, but he got there. Except for we actually got to see it all play out because we have two people who actually know what they're doing. I'm sorry. I don't know why I went to that little tangent, but it was wonderful. Now, next, <laughs> who would you like to see Vicente Luque fight next? He called out Kamaru. Kamaru did send out a text saying like, um, you looked great. We may be dancing soon because they've never fought. One of the few people Kamaru has not beaten in his division. So who would you like to see Vicente fight next? Next up, co-main event. And I got this pick. I chose Jose Aldo to beat Pedro Nunes. And he did three round. I believe it was a unanimous decision. Uh, Jose looked good. And he, he looked good going backwards the whole time. And that's how much he outlanded um, Pedro, especially as the fight went on. Pedro was coming forward the entire time, but it was uh, it was Aldo who clearly was landing the more clear and the harder shots, especially, again, as the fight went on. And as in that third round, he started to box him up. There was really no uh, late kicks, but come to find out, Jose's been uh, training specifically on boxing, and you saw that. There was one time he landed three jabs in a row, jab, 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 bloodied up Pedro from jabbing him, okay? Hard jab. So you could see the work, you could see that he was putting that into practice, and he looked good. He looked strong, he looked big, his body looked, he looked big. I, was, I knew he was going to be bigger than Pedro, but he was even bigger than I thought. He just he just looked good. So whatever he's doing, keeping his body healthy, it's right. The man's 35, I believe, but he is in a smaller weight class, meaning that, you know, Father Time is on his booty. Who would you like to see <laughs> Jose Aldo fight next in a very competitive, awesome division, man and weight division? Now, main event, I did not get this pick. I went with my heart instead of my head. And new UFC heavyweight interim champion, Cyril Gay, because he doesn't deserve that lackluster introduction. Just the whole interim thing does, because it shouldn't have happened. He beat Derek Lewis, finished him in the third round, looked excellent. One of the two rounds uh, uh, prior to that. Okay, like I already said in the prediction video that this fight shouldn't be happening. It's just going to cause a big old mess. I, I was like, just let Derek play it out and let Cyril wait. He can wait. He's only 31 years old in the heavyweight division. That's actually quite young. So he can wait. There's more time. Plus, he hasn't fought, I think, three of like the top seven uh, heavyweights. So either way, I was like, why are we doing this so quickly? Come to find out, they just did a TV deal with France. And they're working on everything for it to open it back up there. You know, UFC loves to have a champion who has an entire country behind him. Cyril being actually born and raised in France and not just coming over there like Francis. He truly is a Frenchman. So the UFC sees the opportunity to expand to a new market that's why he skipped the line as quickly as he did even though he is undefeated and clearly talented but again could have waited now now that, now that I got all of that out of the way let's go ahead and talk about this fight that I clearly didn't agree with so Cyril just looked great the way he moves, athleticism, he had quicker footwork, he was quicker, faster with the hands and with the feet. He was the one pressing forward the whole time. We were all wrong. The, those of y'all saying he's a point fighter, I was saying, no, I think he's a counter striker. He's neither. He's just simply growing. Again, 31 is young for a heavyweight. And I think we're just seeing him figure it out. This fight, he was neither. He was neither a counter puncher or a point fighter. He went forward. He had a, a very diverse offense. He had knees. He, knees. he had kicks to the uh, legs. He went to the body. He had uh, jabs. He, even though there's like only a one inch um, reach advantage between the two of them, he looked longer because he fought long. He was fought smart whenever Derek even uh, planted his feet and even looked like he was going to get to go. And he ducked and got up out of there. He wasn't going to stand and trade with Derek Lewis. And the crowd booed and everything, but it's like, duh, he's not going to stand and trade with Derek Lewis. So, I mean, he fought smart. 
he it was a, a well-rounded attack like i said he had leg kicks he had stuff to the body he had a nice jab uh he was moving forward the whole time Derek couldn't find his footwork he couldn't plant because Derek needs to plant to get that power couldn't do it and not only was Cyril faster he's more powerful than i realized maybe because this is one of the few times well the first time i've seen him with this much offense right and so he's not responding he's creating his own offense and so i'm seeing more of him and he just looked more powerful big and strong and athletic moves like a smaller fighter okay so third round <laughs> third round he's really starting to put it together now Derek's even slowed down a bit he even got a little bit hesitant like he couldn't figure out how to get going you could see it on his face he I believe connected with a, a punch that kind of spun Derek a little bit and then he got him up against the cage to start well on well on him well on him and then it seemed like I was like you know Derek will play possum now he'll play possum and it almost seemed like that's kind of what happened a little bit Derek kind of ducked under and came up again with the shot but then Cyril was able to uh, disengage a little bit and then come back to it with some shots and then um um at one point, the ref actually stopped the action to give Derek his mouthpiece back. Let me know how you felt about that. Is that something he should have done at that moment? Because it was a critical moment. So let me know how you felt about that. That was weird. I've never seen it in that moment. Normally, they kind of wait for a stop in the action for that. He stopped it at a critical moment to give that mouthpiece back to, to Derek Lewis. So let me know what you think about that. So also, when they, uh, they re-engage, he landed a knee to the face, whew, which spinned Derek again. And then he came on him again, dropped Derek to all fours like this. Wow, wow, wow. Ref stop the fight. Third round. Winner. Still game. This was a fantastic performance. And DC read my entire mind and heart when he said, he is a problem for all of them. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was, this is why he, this is why he didn't have to be here. This is why he could have waited. Because <laughs> we knew he was going to get here anyway, just like Francis. We knew, oh, and then they had, they used to train together. So this is all being set up for one big old thing, probably in Francis, and not a big Africa card somewhere like we had thought. Huh? So fantastic performance i don't even know what time i started i'm looking at my clock and i actually don't know what time i started so uh <laughs> let's go ahead and wrap it up let me know what you thought about this entire event great fights let me know oh and again like i said in my prediction video i said i see why he's the favorite and he's going to win but i want derek to win so that's why i chose derek so for those of you who may use my videos for betting purposes make sure you pay attention to those type of words uh <laughs> We'll go ahead and talk about this entire event, how you did it, all your picks, how you feel about this Uriah Favor situation, how you feel about this whole heavyweight situation. You still got Stipe now out there waiting in the wings. John Jones says he's going to come back in 2022. That's going to be here faster than you know. How soon is this next fight going to happen? What's going to happen with Derek Lewis? He always, he's like the in case someone drops out of the title contention. So he may actually work his way in there before like he did with the DC fight. So just let me know what you think about this whole heavyweight situation. Again, the France deal all of that all of that and Cyril himself he is fantastic now real quick I just want to touch on the wrap-up of the Olympics I, I like I said I love the Olympics I just I have a really big respect for athletes in all forms I, I even in the Winter Olympics I watch like the the curling people like it's just it's amazing and just real quick a couple of cool little moments um, I grew up playing volleyball it's the sport that I am best at and I went to a super small school and it was the only sport that we managed to make regions and um, state in. we lost first round in state but the fact that we had a team go to state in anything other than drama which I was also a part of was amazing for us in athletics we were horrible so volleyball was the sport that I was best at so I was really happy to see the women's indoor six-man volleyball team finally get a gold I think they have two silvers and a bronze or it's either two bronze and a silver or two silvers and bronze you had multiple members on the team who this was their last year period and the entire team they won three sets straight the entire team erupted in tears from the coaches on down every member of them it, you could really see how much it meant to them and it really warmed my heart to see it especially as a volleyball fan and them being the only united states volleyball team that doesn't have a gold men women indoor outdoor i didn't know that either i didn't know the women's indoor didn't have one so like that's that was just awesome to see also miss allison felix we're pretty much the same age 
it was like a year or two separation, if that. So I, she has been making me feel bad about my life, my whole life, okay? We're talking like five Olympics. She now has 11 medals. She is the most decorated track and field superstar, male or female, period. Anywhere in the world, in the world, Craig, in the world. And she's a mother twice over. And the fact that she was able to come back and win an actual gold in the women's 4x400 four four, 400, um, says something. Because And she's done a lot of fighting, as you know, as far as like contracts with endorsement deals. Because as soon as a woman is, uh, they have pregnancy clauses. And so if you get pregnant, you lose your Nike contract, essentially. They have all these things that affect women that don't affect men in the same way. And so she's been a big proponent for that behind the scenes. Also, we know that there is something that is taken away from women when they do give birth. That baby just takes so much out of them that they don't seem to be able to come back and perform at the same level. So seeing her come back, not only win two medals, but one of them be gold as well, that is amazing. So awesome to see. Someone who I've been watching my whole life, been watching documentaries about her the whole nine, who's been showing me up my whole life. This is her last Olympics. And I just wanted to say thank you, Allison Felix. You are awesome. So yeah, that, that was it. That was uh, um, um, about all I wanted to say. There's a whole lot more I could cover on the Olympics and maybe I'll do, let me know if you want me to do just a video on Olympic wrap ups and highlights and lowlights and all that period. Let me know if you want me to do that video specifically on that. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Go ahead and comment, like, subscribe. Subscribe. I said all of that. The heat's getting to me. Um, talk to me. Take care. And goodbye.